Hey, what's up, Ron here, and in today's video, I'll show you how to paint details in watercolor seemingly out of thin air. At first, you'll be like, there's nothing there, and then poof, we're gonna make uh, a create a beautiful realistic impression. So let's get started with the process. Okay, so first off is the drawing stage. Now I'm gonna zoom in in just one second because it's a bit hard to see, but you see me dropping in those uh, perspective lines mainly to show where the road goes. This is a very pattern-based painting. So we have the background and then a pattern of cars and then the foreground. And our challenge is how to turn that into a satisfying painting with a satisfying composition and all of those good stuff. And I think I was successful in some areas and less successful in others and you're gonna see uh, exactly what I mean. So first off the drawing, nothing almost there. There is this truck I'm indicating on the left and then the trail of cars and a few of these vertical lines indicating the power lines and all of that. But for the most part, nothing there. Why? Because we're gonna create the details using watercolor. So I'm gonna start with the first thin wash. That's a great way of approaching some more complex scenes where you're unsure of exactly how to paint them. So we're gonna start top to bottom, of course, with the sky, with this muted French ultramarine. And as we get to the middle of the painting, I'm gonna slowly and gradually uh, um, add and introduce a bit more of a red and yellow uh, to it to bring in the warmth down below. Um, Would have probably wanted to attempt this with a different color combination. Some of the colors, I don't like exactly how they work and it's a matter of ratios mostly. Uh, but yeah, that's just my personal thoughts on it. And one thing you wanna have in mind is the, I guess, 30%, uh, 30%, 30% and 40% or 25, 25, 50. So that when you paint a blue, it's like 50% blue and then 25 and 25% red and yellow. That way, your colors look a little more organic. Now, sometimes you wanna push them to be darker, but other times you want them to just work well in the, in the grand scheme of things. And so this is probably one of those instances. Now, look at what I'm leaving behind here. I'm leaving behind very random white highlights for where some of the car's highlights are. This is no science, okay? I'm feeling through it. And that's something I want you to, instead of wondering how I do it and try to copy me, learn from your own experiences. Attempt to paint a lot of patterns and scenes and learn what works for you. You see this a lot with me when I'm painting big dark areas against the light and I'm leaving a lot of random highlights. You saw this a lot in the recent short Paris, here's a, dry, a drying break, just to make sure you, you know that I let it dry. Uh, you've seen it in a lot of my videos. Again, that Paris process is a big, big example of that. Um, and here we go. Now, I pre-wet the paper. Did you catch that? I put some clean water, because this is hot press paper in a very extreme sort of horizontal format. So what I wanna make sure is that I do have good flow and things aren't too patchy. Something that is a bit of a challenge with hot press paper. So I pre-wet and what I'm doing is gradually bringing in more and more paint to get it darker and injecting that paint and look at how this yellow neutralized the mix and slowly injecting that into the wet area. Because what I'm doing is I'm building an area that's slightly darker above the car's highlights. And that's where the mountains and other details are. You know, there's quite a lot of details in this uh, scene that we're really highly simplifying, right? Right? Uh, and so this is, and I'm looking at a reference photo, the fields and the mountains and the trees that are, everything is behind. That's where I'm kind of including them. Now, it's very important not to stop too soon with this stage, which is what a lot of people do. They, they think, okay, I'm done. It just looks fairly dark. It isn't because it's going to dry much, much lighter and you want to keep pushing it more and more. You saw me lifting some of that bead because I need less water to get it to be darker. Okay. And you want to take advantage of these areas for as long as you can, I'm going to introduce a story, bumping the mic, a bit of blue into that because I want to keep it cool and in the background. But look at how dark this looks. And it is very important you push yourself to do that. You may, might have watched my uh, short video on uh, wet and wet mistake. A lot of people make is not mixing dark enough. This is a good demo of me mixing dark enough. Now, as we've gotten to this stage where I feel good about it, we can start developing the theme of cars. And this is where the real magic happens, okay? So I'm gonna get rid of some of the excess paint and I'm gonna use that that wash as kind of a, a, a doorway to start painting the cars and their details. Now, a lot of these cars have a bit of a cool feeling to them and I'm gonna go with that. So look at what I'm doing here. I'm putting in random blocks of gray. Okay. And these don't mean much. So I'm basically looking at a reference photo. I'm saying, okay, there are a bunch of cars there. 
They pretty much look like blocks. And this is the stage where if you lack confidence, and by the way, I'm connecting some of them to the wash above and some of them are separate. Now this stage, Again, if you don't have confidence, you're going to run into some hard times. What I find is more than anything, it is the confidence that helps you get through these stages. If you can just look at the, the, the scene from afar and kind of try and, and recognize a pattern. What's the pattern? Lights and darks. A bunch of highlights, a bunch of darks, and that's pretty much it. We can later on develop it and make it look better. We can later on... Uh, um, uh, um, do some, f not finishing touches, but polish it and, and make sure e each one of these lumps of b gray blue paint actually looks like a car. That's something we can do later on. But for now, it's just about recognizing the pattern, having an even wash and keeping the wash going top to bottom. Okay, now I'm continuing with the foreground and it's very important that I leave this strip of highlight in the middle because that's the road meeting the light. That's the cars meeting the light. And once again, starting light with this continuation of the wash. I'm bringing it down with a very wet paint, but then I slowly and gradually darken it. Um, and that's a very, again, important thing to do when you're working on hot press. Almost always, if your goal is to get it to be dark or a mid value, start light and then do the rest wet and wet. It's just, it works so much better. Took me a long time to figure it out, but it's just one of those things that work. Uh, and it's a very, again, challenging um, type of paper to work on if you're not used to it, but it is possible very much. Now here, we're starting to get to the main mistake I make with this painting. And that is the overall composition, the focal point is meant to be the cars, right? So you want that to be the strongest point of contrast and interest. You want to always pull the viewer's attention there. Now, what, what I did here is I'm starting to, you know, build the foreground and introduce some splashes, and then I'm gonna introduce some darks. The problem with these darks is that they take a lot of the attention off of that highway. So we're creating a, um, a conflict of interest because on the one hand I want you to focus on that trail of cars that is very abstract and beautiful and on the other hand I'm putting and you're gonna see in just one second all of these very strong contrasts in the foreground so the eye doesn't really know what to focus on now it's not completely destroyed I think the painting looks good it's just that the message I was trying to convey could have been conveyed much more effectively that is okay, that's just a part of it. You learn and improve and I'll probably do another version again with a bit of a different color scheme and also try and re return the focal point to that trail of cars. But don't worry, again, we still have more opportunities to let this wash dry, to add more details to the trail of cars. cars of course it's not done, right? Of course there's more work to be done there. We're gonna darken some darks, we're gonna bring back some highlights and you'll see me polishing this up and turning it into, again, pulling out details out of thin air. But for now, let's have trust in the process itself, which is something, again, that is very, very important. Not, all, not enough people have. And with that, let's move on to a commercial break here. If you wanna learn how to paint like this, let go. Enjoy the painting process. Paint loosely, but still get the details and the realism. Check out the Frustration Free Watercolor course. If you just want to get that realistic effect, check out the Watercolor Realism course. I'm very grateful to you for checking out my courses. This is what allows me to continue doing this as my job. Plus, you may wanna check out my books on Amazon. Another thing that's very useful if you wanna just learn how to sketch how to shade, how to draw different subjects. I have a, a bunch of books on that. I will put all the links in the description box below. And thank you from the bottom of my heart. And now let's get back to the process. So here we move on. And for now, again, let's just have trust that it's gonna work out. My technique is actually quite good because this lower section is quite, um, quite wet and I've been bringing in dark enough paint so that it lasts. So my technique is on point. The question is how do you utilize the technique to get the impression you want and this is where things could have been a little better. But now we're back to that trail of cars. The bottom section is still uh, wet and you can see this with the reflection from the metal piece on the uh, brush. But now I'm starting to develop some of these cars. Now the way I do this is funny enough by putting more random shapes but this time darker. And it's funny because they don't really have to relate too much to the first dark shapes I put. I'm really winging it, and that's the skill you want to work on. That's how you pull those details out of nowhere, really. Um, but try and, and sometimes, again, squinting your eyes helps looking at it from afar. Try and see if you can find a, a correlation, let's say, between where the mid values, the darks, and the highlights are. So sometimes what you'll notice is these dark shadows that I'm adding are under 
the mid value ones. Sometimes you'll notice there's a thin strip of light, so you want to keep a gap between the dark shapes to leave a highlight, which you can bring back later, but why not get it right the first time? So you see me putting in those darks, but I'm actually keeping a gap in some spots, trying to make sure that maybe it's it's the window or the shadow under the car. I'm leaving some of those highlights from earlier. Now, the pattern is very hard to preserve accurately the more you add details like this, because this is really not necessarily an a la prima process, but it's a very spontaneous, I'm just putting in the shapes I'm seeing kind of process. So it's very hard to preserve everything together, which is why we are gonna use a lot of opaque paint heavily to fix some stuff, right? But look at all these dark shapes I'm putting with gaps between them. That's actually very important because these gaps are gonna tell the story of this is the, the front of the car catching the light. This is the bottom, okay? Now here we get to the real magic. Let's use opaque paint and I'm using designer's gouache here, but you can use any white paint you want straight out of the tube. Um, don't mix any water with it. And look at how slowly but surely things start to happen. So this is actually a truck. The dark shape isn't perfect, so I'm gonna fix that later too. But look at where the highlights meet its top and the top of this car. It really starts dividing it into different areas. So the roof of the car that usually catches the light and the area above the engine or you know, right next to the, the windshield, these areas are prone to highlight shadows. It's a pattern of highlight, shadow, highlight, shadow, and then shadow underneath it with some gaps in the tires. I've painted so many cars I know by now. That's the kind of pattern you want to focus on. And I um, challenge you to now take a few steps away from the scene or reduce the video to, um, let's say, uh, not a full screen, but a, but a smaller screen. You will start seeing cars. You will start seeing them pop. And I've read a few comments in the re over the recent days that say I, I went away for a second from the video and it was just a bunch of abstract shapes and now it looks like something. That's a very common occurrence. Now, the thing is, you as an artist need to know how to create that while also not losing trust in yourself because this is just what happens. You paint and you, you you don't see it yet. So you lose confidence and you quit or you take a break and then you never return to the painting or you're just kind of losing your interest so you, you just do things haphazardly. Keep the focus, keep at it. It will happen. If you have the vision to take it to the final stage, people will see it. Just like you're starting to see cars popping up now. And it's not perfect, it's still highly impressionistic, but really take a few steps back, you will see cars starting to pop. Um, now, I put a bunch of highlights down below. That's something I'm gonna fix later on. There's this railing to the side of the of the road and that catches the light and it also has a shadow under it and it also has these legs, so to speak. It's like a fence with legs and between the legs, some highlights come through. So you're gonna see me add a bit more to that later on, okay? But again, this is nothing like painting realistically every detail you see. This is just about how do I bring out the details by painting the abstract shapes. It's something I'll always harp on. I always talk about it, okay? Now, this is the easy stage. We're just gonna add some details. So we have those power lines. Uh, we'll have some trees. We'll have some smaller details, but look at how crooked I got this line. And, and look at how I'm gonna use the, the, the brush differently to get these swooshes of cables going up. That's a very tough shape to get. And I think I got it perfectly. That break in the middle is uh, deliberate to make it be less prominent because this is the thinnest brush I have. I didn't have something thinner to use, right? <coughs> And this is actually, again, the easier step. So there are a bunch of trees there. I'm using my tiny, tiny brush um, just to get it, you know, to, to, to get them to look a bit abstract and fun because the focal point, again, is the cars. Now look at how the bottom left corner competes with those cars. That's where I made my mistake. I should have preserved these as light or planes and bring all the attention onto the road, but that's fine. Um, putting in a few details here and there this is because while being in the middle of it, I didn't realize that this is too much, too many details up front in the foreground. I need to put more emphasis on the background. Now, here's that shadow I talked to you about on the railing. Okay, so I'm just getting that shadow in. This is going to help straighten out the road because remember, I told you it's very hard to keep everything in place by adding abstract shapes. This will help to tighten it, make it actually look like a road. And underneath it, I'm gonna bring out these highlights and leave a few gaps for where the legs of the fence are. Of course, I'm not painting it literally. I do steer away from it and, and again, use that abstract shape approach, but that's how you work at it. You layer it slowly, highlights, 
darks, highlights, darks, mid values, right? You can bring in mid values. I've shown you how to paint with um, opaque paints to bring back some of these uh, as well. And here it is, the final result. We're gonna remove the tape of, of all sides. I really hope you enjoyed this process. Let me show you the scan as well in just one second. Again, this isn't realism. This is, and again, take a few steps away from the screen. I promise you, you will start seeing it, that row of cars. My colors aren't perfect, the shapes aren't perfect, but I want you to practice this deliberately. I want you to actively practice the technique of getting this kind of a result because it's just gonna boost your success. And this may end up being like a part that's the background of a painting. And that's how you build a background and then you'll be more literal in the foreground. I just now based a full painting on it, but this could might as well have been a background. And if you get it to look good, it's just so fun and you can go really crazy with it and actually challenge the viewer and yourself um, to see things in a realistic manner. But once they get up close to the painting, you're like, there's no details here. How, how, did, how did this person fool me into seeing a realistic image when there's nothing there up close? That's the visual magic of just painting and watercolor. I really hope you found this helpful. Be sure to check out my courses, books, Patreon, and everything else I'm gonna put in the description box below. It allows me to continue doing these fun videos for you, completely free. And we're gonna wrap it up for today and I will see you in the next video. There is probably gonna be a live stream this week. Sorry, I know I've changed things up because I was extremely busy, but we're gonna go back to routine real soon. Thank you so much, we'll talk again soon.